Released in 1987 in Japan only for the Famicom Disk System, we have Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic. This game was published by Fuji Television and a year later was reworked into the North American and European release of Super Mario Bros. 2. It is a two-sided disc for the FDS. Let's pop it in and give it a try, shall we? Here we have the Famicom Disk System uh, booting screen and this is uh, the Sharp Twin version of it. It actually says Famicom on it. If you have the actual Famicom Disk System uh, that hooks up to your original Famicom, it would say Nintendo where it said Famicom. And incidentally, I managed to repair my Sharp Twin Famicom. Uh, it took a little bit of work. I had to realign the magnetic head in the disk drive, and I also had to adjust the motor speed. Oh man, that's something I haven't had to do in a long time. Flip sides on a disc. Here we go. Now right from the beginning you'll notice that the characters are different. Instead of Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Princess, we have Mama, Papa, and uh, two children. But they have all the same characteristics of Mario, Luigi, Princess, and uh, Toad. If you're only familiar with the North American and European version. Oh, and there is one major thing that I should note right off the bat. Uh, in the North American and European version, you use the B button to run faster than your normal walking. And this version doesn't have that. So there's only one speed for uh, moving around your character, which definitely throws your game off a little bit, makes it a little bit more challenging. Now while much of the basic game is the same, you'll, you will notice slight differences. Uh, the music and sound effects are definitely different at points. Some of the music's the same, but there are... Um, different instances where you'll hear different music than you would have normally heard on the Nintendo North American uh, and European versions of Super Mario Bros. 2. And aside from the obvious char main character sprite changes, uh, you'll notice a few other sprite changes. Uh, instead of having a mushroom to gain an extra bar of life, uh, you have a, um, a heart. Which makes more sense to me. I always questioned why they didn't have uh, hearts on the, the Super Mario Bros. 2 version. Because actually to refill your life you'll see a heart float up to the top of the screen and you'll have to grab it. But yeah, any reference to a mushroom or a shell sprite in this game has been, you know, that was added for the uh, European North American version to, you know, equate with the Mario characters. So there are no shells or mushrooms in this game. Another thing I'd like to note is the ability to save in this game, which is an extremely cool feature. Um, and the other thing that makes it interesting is that to actually beat this game, you have to beat all seven levels with each character. So when you notice on the character select stage or, or screen, you can select different stages and certain stages are green and the rest are like uh, yellow or something. And the green ones are ones that you've already beaten and saved. Uh, so this is my first time playing this version of the game. The, per the previous owner had beat the first stage with all four characters and then used the um, whatever the equivalent of the princess character is, up to like stage level 3 or something. And then they just gave up. So this is a relatively unused copy, which was pretty cool to see.
Ah, now the flying carpet actually makes sense. When I played the original Super Mario Bros. 2, I'm like, why the hell do they have a flying carpet in this thing? But it's an Arabic family, so I guess, yeah, it makes sense now. Bizarre. It's, it's strange the things that some, you know, video game companies do. I'll never understand it. Now, one other thing of note is, in this version of the game, when you pick up a key, um, the little mask face things that chase you when you pick up a key, they don't chase you on the uh, first screen where you pick up the key. It's the uh, preceding screens after that they begin to chase you. And in the uh, Super Mario Bros. 2 version of this game, they chase you right off the bat. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And here we are as we approach the first end boss, Mauser. And, uh, it's a fairly simple character to beat. Uh, also, I'd like to note that in the uh, Super Mario Bros. 2 version of this game, there was an extra uh, end boss, and that was a giant crab. That giant crab is not in this uh, version of the game. He's uh, replaced by just uh, yet another Mauser. Now, if you're wondering why the sound effects are so radically different from uh, the Super Mario Bros. 2 version, it's because the Famicom Disk System had an extra sound channel in it. It wasn't used by that many games, but this is one of the games that actually did use it. So that's just an interesting little side note. Also, like the Super Mario Bros. 2 version, on the uh, bonus slot machine part at the end of the stage, if you have a turbo button and just hold down the A button, you'll automatically get three matching of whatever is the first to show up. So that's a nice little cheat to know uh, if you're into that sort of thing. And there you have it. Doki Doki Panic for the Famicom Disk System. Great little game to pick up. I'm Dami from Classic Games Revisited. Until next time.